Okay, we are back in Sentinels of the Multiverse, and the mirror matches have begun. So, Luminary versus Blade. And I will bring all of the other heroes with. We're going to be doing each of the new environments in one of the mirror matches, and once the mirror matches are done, well, we can do Oblivion with the new environments. So I was trying to think of what best fits which villain. And we're going to be doing Blade and Mordenkrad, Deadline in the Refuge, Akash Buta in the Nexus of the Void, La Capitan in Fort Adamant, and Matriarch in Champion Studios. Now, I'm not making any promises about winning against the Matriarch because I don't know if this team can do it. <laughs> We may need a lucky draw or something, and I don't even know how the environment's going to work with it, because I know Champion Studios has a game over condition in it. But anyway, for a quick rundown of the five, we have the Luminary. Complexity 1. He discards the top card, two cards of his deck, and any devices discard go into play. So I should warn you about Luminary. He has some synergy with Baron Blade, where you can actually power up the Baron, if I'm correct, and read these cards. And then if you were to play him in Omnitron 4, for some reason, he could actually buff all the things that are trying to kill you. Fun, fun. Now on the flip side... Ah, uh, is it Bomber Blade? Hmm, no, it's not. It might be, uh, the other blade. So I'm gonna make a small detour here. So people are wondering if his advance rule actually applies to Luminary, because it should, which makes things a little interesting. So right there you can read about Oblivion modes. Not for beginners! Hint, hint. So we'll hit no thanks for now. And as planned, mirror match, Baron Blade, go. I will read the cards as we hit them. What bonkery is this? How dare you impersonate the great Baron Blade? Tell me that I was not so foolish as to fail to recognize the temporal displacement. The criminal scattering alone should have been obvious. Out comes the defense platform. Surprise, surprise. Remote turrets. <laughs> That's two devices that have hit the field already. So we have the Baird Blade. Draw a card, use a power, deal damage. This is better later when you have more powers. We have the Regression Turret. Deals up to three targets, one projectile damage each, and until the start of the turn, reduce their damage dealt by one. Pretty handy. We have the Repair Nanites. At the end of your turn, either Luminary gets one hit point, or three devices get one hit point. Very, very, very handy. And then Technologically Stable. Draw a card, pull a device from your trash, put it in your hand, play a card so you can get a device out immediately. So clearly we're going to go for the regression turret. And before I forget... Bah! That formula is far too unstable. This new experimental mixture is just the thing. Also, I should point out in case you didn't notice... The variants for these guys are not in the game yet. So I don't have to worry about unlocking them if I move fast enough. So we have Lifeline. His power is Extract Power, which is basically twice as good as normal bunkers. Draw a card, one other player can draw a card. So he is very handy for Commodora, who will burn through her deck like no tomorrow. Or her hand, I should say. So we have Calculate Action. Lifeline deals himself one Infernal Damage. Either play two cards or draw three. We have Enclave's Tech. Reveal cards from the top of your deck until an equipment card is revealed, and then put it into play. Discard all the other ones. And then you shuffle your trash in your deck, so it doesn't really matter. He has five equipment cards total. We have the Leyline Shift. Deals himself one infernal damage, discard the top card of each deck, and put one of those cards into play. And finally, Unleash Energy. Deals himself and each non-hero target two energy damage, draw a card, or play a card. So, we'll do Unleash Energy for now. There's... Endling armor that you can get that will make it so that you can um, reduce self damage. It's basically like any other. I'll pull it out real fast. It's literally like any other damage reduction card. That's not it. Here we are. 
reduce damage dealt to him by one, and then he either heals or deals damage, which sets it apart from Otherworldly Resilience, Fortitude, and a bunch of other cards. As for the Nordian Sulfax I just drew, the lifeline deals one target two melee damage and one fire damage. If that destroys a target, then he hits everything, all villain targets, for one infernal damage. It is not mine, but I wield it for its owner. In their name, I act this day. Harrow. So next up is the Harpy. She has Arcane Blast, which is pretty generic, to be honest. Deals one target, two infernal damage. We have Calling the Flock. So, this will allow you to pull Hunan and Munin, but they're in my hand already. This will heal them if they're already in play, and then you pop something for one damage. We have Direct Strike. I probably should point out her tokens in a moment, because they're not that easy to see. Flip two control tokens, draw two cards. Well, those are like Arcane and Bird. I don't know what they're actually called exactly. So anyway, flip two control, draw two cards, discard up to as many cards as their Bird tokens. Whenever you discard a card that way, Harpy deals one target, one projectile damage. Then we have Hunan and Munin. In the event that there are three or more of these Bird tokens, increase projectile damage dealt by the Harpy by one. And at the end of your turn, flip one control token, or this card deals one target, two projectile damage. And then we have the Phlox Care. When there are three or more control tokens like there are right now, reduce damage dealt to the Harpy by non-hero targets by one. If she's dealt damage by a non-hero target, if there are three or more bird tokens, then she will retaliate. So for now, we will unleash Heckle and Jekyll onto the world. So, I'm going to go for the defense platform, because I'm not really worried about the turret at the moment. I have the regression turret stopping it. As for Commodora, Power's Times Lessons. Shuffle a hero deck, select a card from that deck's trash, put it under the top card of the deck. All in all, I consider that to be a pretty bad power, to be honest. If you can get a lot of card draws, you can actually get the card, but I don't really like the whole part about shuffling a deck, because there are all sorts of things you can do to actually arrange cards a certain way, like Vernal Sonata or Reclaim from the Deep come to mind. That will, well, this power will interfere with those. It has a pretty strong negative synergy with the, well, it has a potential negative synergy with the Dark Conductor. Although if you really pay attention, you can actually turn it into a strength, which makes things really, really crazy. Anyway, we have combat timing. If Commodore would be dealt three or more damage, prevent the damage on the Commodore will deal that target two projectile damage, destroying the card in the process. We have the Concordant Helm. You may take your play, power, and draw phases in any in any order. At the end of your turn, you may either move an equipment card from your trash to your hand, or put the bottom card of your deck in your hand. So this is helpful for getting her cards, because she discards a lot. Such as this one. The start of your turn, either discard a card or destroy a discard. Tons of her equipment cards say that, just so you know. The power here, she deals five targets, one irreducible damage each. Very, very handy if there's damage reduction on the field, such as, say, oh, I don't know, apostate, for example. And then take time. You may destroy an ongoing card, an environment card, or a target with one hit point. If cards are destroyed this way, draw cards until you have five in hand. So, once again, since she discards a lot, this is one of those things that will fill up your hand. It's kind of like a prayer of desperation. And what's best is if you're playing with Mainstay or Stuntman, you can pop one of their ongoing cards, they activate, you get your stuff, and mayhem ensues. So for the time being, I'm going to do the Concordant Helm, just because I don't have anything better to do. It really doesn't matter what I do, so we'll draw a card, just take this out of- Ooh. <laughs> So here's the Paradoha figurehead. So at the start of your turn, either discard a card or destroy this card. Increase damage dealt by hero targets in this play area by one. And at the end of your turn, you move this to a different play area. So imagine if you combine this with Unity, Captain Cosmic, or I don't know, uh, Luminary, for example. Gets nasty fast, folks. So that is one of her best cards, if you can tell from my evil laugh. So Times Lessons will shuffle her deck, because it really doesn't matter. 
We will pull the bottom card. And I didn't see what it was. Harness Anomaly. This is a decent one. And then finally, the team's anchor. Akash Thria. Her power is Dormant Essence. Put a primordial seed from your hand or trash in the environment trash. Then draw a card. She has two seeds in her hand, none in her trash. So you have Healing Pollen, which is a seed. When this is played from the environment deck, one hero target gains 4 HP. When this card is destroyed, draw a card, each hero target gains 1 HP. So generally you want to get it over here. She is pretty handy in that while she doesn't neutralize the environment like Naturalist does, you will see her cards on top of the deck and you know that the next play is safe. And then she will speed up the environment play too, so just be aware that is a thing. We have Instantaneous Maturation, where she deals herself two Psychic Damage. She'll search her deck for a Primordial Seed, put it on top of the Environment deck, and then shuffles her deck. Then you play the top card of the Environment deck, thus playing the Seed immediately. Then you either play a card or shuffle the Environment Trash into the Environment deck. Hmm. We have Rapid Growth. A mobile defense platform. How fitting! Shuffle the Environment Trash into the Environment deck. Discard to six cards from the top of the Environment deck. She heals herself, and one target X toxic damage where it's the number of cards discarded this way. So she has a tendency to blow herself up, just so you know. I don't really know if there's a good way to mitigate that just yet. I don't know if there are other cards that can kind of protect her. That's what I'm kind of interested in. I imagine, like, Heroic Interception would be one. Grease Gun will not do it. It might literally only be Heroic Interception. And then we have Vitalized Thorns. If this card was not played for the environment deck, it's immediately destroyed. Whenever a hero target deals damage to Akash Thria, this card deals that target one melee damage. When this is destroyed, it deals one target three projectile damage. So, let's see. This is the fun one. At the start of your turn, you sure may use a power, but that causes this thing to implode. In case you're wondering, this synergizes amazingly with the any form of the Argent Adept. So what you want to do is you want to use Counterpoint Bulwark to protect this thing. That way you can indefinitely use the powers with minimized backlash. And it's really, really ridiculous. Otherwise we have the Creeping Mold. The Noxus Pod isn't really that good. I'm not really a fan of this one. Just so you can see it. When this is played for the environment, I can discard cards, then draw cards, so you can swap out a bad hand for a good hand. Strangling Roots. This is what I'm leaning towards, because I can use this to block the platform. The one thing that sucks about this is that the damage reduction only works when it's first played. So... Eh. Still, I want to do the instant maturity thing. So as for which one we'll do, kind of lean towards this one. Actually, we'll do creepy mold. So that enters play immediately. So I was wondering if this stayed in the environment area or where exactly it went. So I could have it hit itself. So I will play another card, such as this here, Healing Pollen. Okay, so the thorns are over here. Just in case you didn't see him go. So that comes the Blade Battalion Commander. All non-hero targets the max. I get to read all of it. I did not look at the envi environment decks at all, just so you know. I have no clue what to expect. Hmm. I'm willing to take the hit. So we'll destroy the battalion commander. I 
probably should have hit Hunan and Munin first because they would have gotten healed off that. So I'm going to play the next regression turret, that way we can cut into their damage. And this time I'm going to start going after the Baron himself. All according to plan. Increases device damage, so you have to be careful because he has devices of his own. Deals himself one infernal damage, play or draw. I'm going to do that, calculate action. I wish to draw three, so we get Cryptic Alignment, Repair Ley Line, and Alien Arcana. Card other than this one enters Ley So I'm just making sure the Paradoha thing is an equipment card, that won't count. And then this is just extra damage that goes off, but in the meantime, choppy choppy! So I'm thinking about playing this to heal Hunan and Munin. It only deals one target, one damage. Reveal the top card of one hero deck. Play a card revealed this way. Discard any other revealed cards. How do you reveal more than one? Or is it like if the one causes more to be played? This one I'm not sure about. Anyway, we're gonna go for the Phlox Care. Got the Harpy Hex. So we're going to draw a card just to maximize our options, even though I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to play. Just keep in mind, by drawing two, since you didn't take any action, or by drawing the card at the start of your turn, you get two draws because you didn't play a card or use a power, just so you know. As far as I know, that is not a glitch, but it very well could be. So we have the Temporal Rigging. This allows a hero to use a power out of turn, and if they don't, then you get a card to offset what you just discarded. So I wish to play this blade. What you got? Oh, wrong blade. Luminary. A regression turret. So we have two of those. So we're gonna do that again. This time we're gonna have Akash do it. So I want to do this one. She plays Primeval Germination, first time environment card enters play each turn, I ain't get to read all of that. And then we're gonna play a card. First time environment card enters play each turn, either play or discard the top card of the environment deck. At the end of your turn, you may shuffle a Primordial Seed from the environment trash into the environment deck. If you remember, we have one of those. By the way, if you're curious about the Battalion. All non-hero targets with a max of 5 HP or less gain the keyword minion. Be careful with the boss, because that could instantly kill you. At the end of the environment turn, each minion deals the hero target with the highest HP, one melee damage. Hmm. Let's go for Akash. We will bring out... the Palm. So I'll draw, and we're going to give this to, you guessed it, the Luminary. Even though Harpy can make decent use of it too, as long as Heckle and Jekyll are still intact. So this will increase damage dealt by the Primordial Seeds. She can hit herself and other targets where it's based off the number of Primordial Seeds, which is why I'm thinking about doing that. Alternatively, we can use this one to fish out the Primordial Tree and put it into play. 
So Kosh will hurt herself by the number of seeds you destroy, by doing so will heal the tree. I'm going to ignore the turret for the time being, which may be a choice I will regret. Okay, our seed is now in the environment deck. Out comes the remote walking tank. So that top card is not our card, so it's getting trashed. As for what it was... Play Battalion Platoon. Steals hero targets highest HP to projectile damage where it's the cards. Okay, so they shoot the number of targets based on their number. As for the Baron, he plays the Battalion. So, this is dangerous that it's going to boost device damage. I want to get my nanites out for the time being. Keep in mind with the damage reduction, this thing can't actually be hurt, and I don't want to hit it, or I don't want to play this so that I could hit it, because that will boost its damage, which will offset this. So I want to shoot that down. We have the Paradoha figurehead, so I guess we actually could shoot this. I don't really care about the Blade Battalion, I can pick them off with splash damage. So we want to heal our devices. <laughs> I'm not healing that device. So one target, one infernal damage. Discard a card if you do lifeline deals, one energy damage, or it's the number of ongoings in his play area. That's not enough yet to justify it. Play the top card of the environment deck that is not Akash's, so be careful. But you can hopefully see that this guy will synergize with her very, very nicely. And then you can have Harpy or someone else shoot something, so keep that in mind. So for the time being, I'm going to do Alien Arcana. And I'm going to hit these guys, I think, just to make sure that they can't really hurt us. So I can ignore them now. Harpy Hex. Let's flip the control token. Yeah, we'll do that one. Let's go for the Baron. Silence your anguish, creature. Your existence is a live creation. So she's going after the swamp thing wannabe mangrove, I think it's called, it looks like. She now walks with a confidence born of experience and uprightness. So let's see, if I wanted to flip... Yeah, I actually get a better return from this one right now. I am going to need to try to patch them up, though. I'm going to get rid of this one. Draw two. Ooh, we got some beauties there. So first is Rudder in the Time Stream. Once again, discard a card or this card. So in case you're wondering, this is an alternative Haka. She's in the objective deck in Oblivion mode. Move one card from a trash to the bottom of that card's deck, then move one card from a different trash to the bottom of that card's deck. Draw a card. This will offset the whole destruction thing. And the other thing we got was... This one, Chronological Sweet Spot. So this is her only ongoing, I think, that has the... Uh, or wait, no. Destroy one of your ongoing or equipment cards at the start of your turn. At the end of your turn, reveal the top card of each hero's deck. The revealed is a one-shot played, if not discarded. We also drew the cannon portal somewhere along the line. At the end of your turn, Commodore deals one target, three projectile damage. We're going to do this one, just try to speed up everyone's play. For this one, we'll do lifeline. I want to get the Enclave tech out so that we can possibly get another one of the Endling techs in. So, move the bottom card of the deck to hand. And we can't leave this in Luminary's area, so I think I'm going to move it to Harpies. So, Luminary, what you got for us? It's a one-shot. 
So remember the price of victory? Well, consider the price of defeat. Each player may draw a card. Each hero target regains one hit point. So out comes our first Doomsday device. Out comes Haunted Memories, which I could have played. He hits himself, but you get to pull cards from your trash in your hand, which I already got rid of. This was a one-shot. So I may redo this just to show you all their effects. That we couldn't use. That we couldn't use. So, real quick to show you the price of defeat. Discard the top card of your deck, which we saw was all according to plan. Increase damage dealt by devices whenever device is destroyed. You either discard another card or you deal some toxic damage. So next was Lifeline. He revealed Enclave Tech. I forgot a lot about that. So comes the Matter Manipulator. Or no, the Vitality Battery. So never not hero targets destroyed during your turn, either draw a card or something. We'll go to that one now. Either draw a card or heal two hit points. Lifeline deals one target three fire damage, three energy damage, destroying that in the process. So that's a decent last resort, or if you know something nasty is coming. Harpy, what you got for us? Ooh, Eldritch Training. So she flips a token, which means this goes off. It's boosted by the Paradoha figurehead. So we have to destroy a card. If you do, flip a control token. You don't have to. Draw a card and use a power. So I'm happy with my stuff the way it is. We're going to leave it alone. We drew Direct Strike. And... Pew Pew! Commodora. Ooh, Flintlock and Cutlass. So you shoot him, and then you stab him. And one with the land came out, so we can't use that, I'm afraid. Did that go in the trash? Yes, it did. So, whenever a Primordial Sea is destroyed, you may move it to the Environment Trash. Whenever a hero target would be dealt damage by an Environment card, you may redirect that damage to a Primordial Seed. So, hopefully you can see how that can... Well, I'll put it this way. If you can get all your Primordial Seeds out in the Environment Trash, <laughs> the Environment's not doing anything anymore. So, let's look at Scatter Seeds. She will deal herself up to four Psychic Damage. Draw the amount of cards and discard the amount of cards equal to the amount of damage you dealt. Then you can pull the Primordial Seeds from your trash to the Environment Trash. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to go ahead and do the full four so you can see her cards. So we drew Earth's Attunement, the Brambles, as the Earth turns, and more Scatter Seeds. So we'll get rid of the Pollen, the Thorns, um, we already have this in play, it's limited, so we're going to discard that. And then if you want to see as the Earth turns, whenever Villain card would be played, Akash can deal herself psychic damage. If she does, play the Environment deck instead. Only lasts for one turn, but very, very handy for stalling out something bad. We have Earth's Attunement. At the end of your turn, Akash may deal herself two psychic damage. If she does, shuffle the Environment trash into the deck, which we're going to be aiming for soon. And then play the top card of the Environment deck. You may destroy an Environment card. So, you'll play the card, and if you don't like it, just pop the sucker. I want that in the field, if you haven't gathered. So for the rapid growth... I'm gonna get rid of this one. So, all three are going... Hold on. See, so yeah, I'm going to do Dormant Essence. We drew the roots. Out comes the Commander. So we can see it's not our card. We discard it. Highest HP, we'll say is Commodora, and the other one's gonna hit Akash. Out comes the Backlash Field, which we need to neutralize. The sooner the better. He's had a pretty tame game so far. Commodora, because... So for the Doomsday device to work, you need 15 cards in your trash. So I don't have that as such, I'm not gonna worry about it. Maybe... 
supplies from their trash? Do I even have any in there? I did not. So I think it's time to put everything out according to plan. Hit him, this, and the Baron. So we hit him for two and we take two back. So I want Luminary to heal here, because I can use the other turret. So if you want to see the Infernal Detonator, at the end of your turn put up to five cards from your hand under this card. When this card is destroyed, destroy all cards under this card. Deal one target, X irreducible infernal damage where it's based off the number of cards destroyed this way. Plus one. And the power is destroy set card. So hunting memories. We don't have enough cards to make use of that. We can put out cryptic alignment. So this will deal one target X energy damage is equal to the number of cards. That'll be two compared to this. This is six, but we lose the card. So yeah, we'll flip the Baron. We'll hit him for three, we take two. And then it's safe to keep hitting him since the Backlash field went off. So we have Lash of the Elements. Deal a number of targets based off these control tokens. One of three instances of one damage of varying elements. And then she'll hit herself for the number of avian tokens, which is right now a pretty good number. Like, we only hit ourselves once compared to all the damage we'll deal. We have the direct strike, where you flip two of your tokens, draw two cards, and then you have to discard based off the other tokens, so we'll lose three cards in the end. Flip side of this is we will deal one target, one projectile damage, and then the projectile damage will be boosted by Phlox Care and the Figurehead. So I have two really good options. Because this will be boosted by the Figurehead, so I'm dealing six damage with this. Decisions, decisions. We'll do it. We'll do the direct strike. So, deals infernal damage outright, then we'll take some damage from the backlash field, mitigated by the Phlox Care. By flipping our token, we will hit him, flipping him. We draw three cards, or two cards. So, Eldritch Train, we've seen, allows you to use a power, I don't really have a lot of powers now, so I'm going to get rid of that. That allows me to do a projectile attack. For the Mystical Outburst, flip all of our tokens except for one. Deal one target, X Infernal Damage, or it's the number of control tokens flip this way, plus one. That's not going to do a lot for us at the moment. So I wasn't keeping track of how much damage we dealt to him so far, but keep in mind, it's going to be a doozy of a turn. So we want to keep doing the projectile damage train since we have the figurehead. Hunan and Munin are on their last legs. <laughs> so I will take time to keep the figurehead going. As for what I destroy... Do I want to part with the figurehead? Yeah, I will, just to keep the one card going. We'll draw two, got the flintlock, the way anchor. So for way anchor, reveal the bomb card of your deck. If it has the same name as a limited card currently in play, you discard it, otherwise you put it into play. If it is an equipment card, then you pull again. So out comes the brig teleporter, which reveals the deck gun, which reveals combat timing. So I'm going to fire my deck gun. So it's irreducible damage. We don't need the blade battalion anymore. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't think I have anything here that'll go off, so no point. So, bottom card comes to our hand. Luminary. Regression turret. No, lifeline. No, it's cosmic immolation. That's his equivalent to bloody knuckles. Harpy. Wow. Commodore. Wow, I'm zero for four. Hey, Akash came through for us. So on top of the environment deck, this is a good time for the strangling roots to come out. Ah, uh, wait a second, that goes off. Yeah, until the start of your turn, that's bad actually. Basically the effect would end immediately. So we've seen all of these, we're just going to do a different card with Akash. We're going to do the Creeping Mold, I have an idea. So we want to hit this, this, and him. So the backlash field goes off, it's going to knock it down to one hit point. So I can play a card or shuffle the trash into the deck. Let's shuffle. Eh. So for the Brig Teleport, at the start of your turn, either discard a card or destroy this card. At the end of your turn, Commodore may deal one target one irreducible energy damage. If that target has five or fewer hit points, it cannot deal damage until the start of your turn. So we're going to hit Baron Blade. So I'm thinking about Earth's Attunement. We have Accelerate Nature's Order, play the top three cards in the environment deck. When you play a non-hero card, she will deal herself damage and destroy an environment card. So we'll Accelerate Nature's Order. So we'll hit ourselves here, but we can destroy a card. So notice this is one of our cards. We want to play this thing. So for the Battalion Command Center, at the end of the environment turn, reveal the top card of the environment deck and the top card of the villain deck. Any revealed minions go into play, anything else gets discarded. Hopefully you realize this will destroy your seeds. Get rid of it. Out comes the device assembly line. So I need to show you this card. At the end of the environment turn, discard the top card of each deck in turn order, starting with the villain deck. Whenever a device card is discarded this way, put it into play unless one player discards two cards. So keep in mind, you can use this to pull cards from Luminary's deck and put them into play. I highly recommend you do that. Out comes the Blade Battalion Platoon. We're going to destroy that immediately, but we're going to have that. So I was thinking about having it attack Blade and take the Backlash Field, but I'd rather have to destroy the tank. Play the top card of the Villain deck. Out comes the Living Force Field. So Luminary, we wish to deal target damage, like this guy. So, I'm gonna be reckless. So I want to hit these so that they don't blow up everything. So I'm wondering, do I want to destroy this? So I can use this to destroy... ...the Backlash Field. It's our healing pollen! So I want to heal Heckle and Jekyll here, because I like them. They're growing on me. Not literally, mind you, that would be weird. 
Okay, so if I paid attention, that would have been a little bit better. So let's see, do I have anything nasty that I can use to turn this around? Because I may lose some heroes here, but we'll do it. So when the pollen goes, it's going to heal everyone. So the only one we're going to lose is Akash. I'm going to discard the top part of my deck. So I was kind of curious if that got the cards out of her deck. Didn't. So the disposable defender, which she could have used to block that massive nuke. But overall, it doesn't really matter. So we can play a card, move device from the trash. Like, I don't really want to kill him just yet. Drew another disposable defender. We'll go with the nanites and put those into play. So we'll discard our top cards, which pulls us a Backlash Generator. So I'll pull that up. First time any device is still damaged by a non-hero target, each turn this card deals the source of that damage one lightning damage. So keep in mind it's not going to pierce this force field, but it's the next best thing. So we can do Repair Leyline to heal everyone. That'll play the top card of the environment deck, sadly, but someone else gets a power play. It's not going to save Heckle and Jekyll since they're gone. Black hole generator. It's a doomsday device at that. We'll have Harpy fire. Can give this to Commodora. So keep in mind that will not get through, so we're going to go to the black hole generator. Start the environment turn, discard the top card of each deck. This card deals each target other than itself X energy damage and then destroys X environment cards. X on this card is equal to the number of devices in all trash piles, plus one. So yeah, this is the end of the game, sadly. Let's call the flock. Search our trash. Why, it's Hunin and Munin! Pew pew. So there you go, a very, very epic game against Baron Blade and Mordengrad. And that's the first of the mirror matches. So it gives you a taste for some of the cards, and when we pick up next time, it's gonna be with Deadline and Lifeline. I don't know if I'm going to upload them with this video or what, I'm kind of trying to see all, like best case scenario, I'm hoping to, on third Saturday, that's right, Saturday to finally touch up the mode, and we'll see what ends up happening. I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching, and goodbye.